Thanks for joining us this morning. Appreciate it's early. Um, I know I didn't sleep particularly well, uh, and that was not due to volumes or copious amounts of beer either. Um, here this morning to um, have a look at deploying Nano Server really, and using a module that I put together called Ability, which is all around spinning up um, Hyper-V development machines, labs, that sort of stuff. The purpose of this was more for me to investigate how Nano Server works, could we deploy it? None of my customers are looking already for Nano Server at this moment in time. Um, however, the future we've been told is Nano Server. So this was more of an exploratory kind of test. And when I looked at it and deploying Nano Server, deploying Nano Server is actually quite easy. So I thought, why, why don't we extend that to deploying a nested hyper-converged Nano Server cluster on Hyper-V? Sounded like a good time, a good idea at the time. Um, as you'll see as we go through, I may have bitten off a little more than I could chew at times, but there we go. So we're going to have a quick recap, seriously, a quick recap on what hyper-converged clusters are, uh, particularly from a, from a Hyper-V perspective. And then we're going to look at how we can create nano-server images easily using the, the Lability module and potentially spin up a, a new nano-server VM quite quickly. Um, we're then going to look at how do we use Lability and DSC to deploy our nested Hyper-V infrastructure. So to deploy Hyper-V, we're going to need domain controller because cluster requires Active Directory. So we're going to need Active Directory. And then we're going to need some nodes. And then we're going to need some storage and all that sort of stuff. So how how can we use the ability to do that for us? And then we're actually going to, once we spun the infrastructure up, we're then going to run some DSC configuration to actually deploy the hyper-converged cluster. And all being well, we should be able to spin up a nested Hyper-V virtual machine you know, and migrate it between nodes in, in, within that cluster itself as well. So what is a, a hyper-converged cluster? So and I robbed this from Microsoft's uh, website, so I should have put a copyright notice on it. Um, this is a disaggregated cluster. So this is your typical Hyper-V cluster. So you have a cluster of uh, compute nodes in a Hyper-V cluster, and then you'll have a separate storage cluster, SAN, if you will, uh, using ScanOut File Server. These are typically scaled independently, so you can scale your compute at different, at different speeds to how you, um, you can scale out your storage. When we look at a hyper-converged cluster, we take the, the compute and the storage and we combine them together. So now we have discrete units, and typically these will be, you know, these will be individual low-cost off-the-shelf hardware that you'll fill with you know, spinning rust disk and you'll have SSDs and you may have NVMe in there. Um, and you'll combine the local storage and the compute and you'll make a hyper-converged cluster out of it. So this, in theory, scales linearly. linearly you know? So if you need more compute, you can add another node and the storage will grow with it as well. Yeah. And that's, you know, over time you can scale this out. And it just means that you've got very little waste. You're using local components. You don't necessarily need SAN components. You know, we're using locally attached disk. Um, using um, storage spaces direct within the hyper-converged cluster. And in our environment, we're going to stick Hyper-V underneath it. So we are going to run on a Hyper-V host, which happens to be my laptop. We are then going to spin up Active Directory and all of these nodes, you know, present local storage off my laptop to, into each of these nodes and deploy a hyper-converged network cluster. It is pretty cool. Obviously, you wouldn't run in a production environment like this. So, so what is Lability? Has anyone heard of Lability? No, it's pretty cool. It's been around for a couple of years. Um, it's used quite frequently. The amount of people actually come up and say that they're using this still astounds me. I don't, I don't know why. Um, we initially developed this internally where we had the requirement to move our training and development environment locally from what was Citrix Zen Server at that time. We wanted to move to AWS, and we've since moved from AWS onto Revelo for our cloud storage. And we're, we're looking at moving from Revelo onto Azure Dev Test Labs for, for a lot of our development and training uh, requirements. We took the decision to take those configurations, so our development environments and our training environments where we deliver training to customers. We decided we we're going to convert them to DSC. And whilst we were developing our DSC configurations for these training and development environments, well, there's a lot of tearing them up, tearing them down. It doesn't work. You make some changes. You know, you need to make some changes to resources, configuration parameters. You then spin the, the domain up again and then, you know, 
configure all these other environments. So this is where Lability came out of, is this, you have your DSC configuration and your DSC configuration data. Lability can read that configuration data and you know the, the fact that you've got 10 nodes defined in the configuration data, it will create 10 Hyper-V VMs and you can sprinkle some metadata within the configuration document and you can tell it, you know, you can override it which virtual switch you want it on, you know, whether you want any additional disks, um, what operating system you want deployed. So it was just an easy way of taking that configuration and spinning it up, testing it, tearing it down, spinning up another one, tearing it down. So internally, we now spin up training and development environments. If we need to spin up a, a testing environment, Citrix, for instance, spin up a, a, a lab with a particular version of Zen Desktop and do some testing, you know, we can just pull a configuration document, we can use the ability, it spins it up, we do our testing and we just blow it away. Pretty cool. Yeah. You're only really going to use it if you're using DSC. Um, there are open source equivalents. So um, Vagrant is probably the best well-known one. So Lability does a lot of what Vagrant does. Just obviously Vagrant uses YAML files and different configurations and all that sort of stuff. Whereas Lability was just focused on DSC. You know, one configuration document, that's my environment, and I can use that to deploy as well. There has recently been some experimental support added to Lability to support adding additional disks and enabling some um, Hyper-V virtual machine processor options. These are needed for our nested Hyper-V cluster. So we need, we need to be able to add additional hard disks if we want to use storage spaces direct to aggregate below the VHDs into a single storage point. So what you're seeing here is a development version. It's not the version that's on the PowerShell gallery. So, nano server images. Um, has anyone deployed nano server? How to play with it? Yeah, fairly straightforward. Yeah. And this is why I extended the kind of reach of this talk, because by the time I worked out how to deploy nano server, we could probably be done in five minutes. Um, so they are on the on the twenty server on server twenty sixteen ISO. They are just a standard WIM file. So if you can deploy a WIM via MDT, or you know you can pixie boot it, you can boot off a USB key. Um, you can then put that. You can deploy Nano onto physical kit or, or virtual. You can also generate a VHD file using the built-in tools that are, you know Microsoft have provided in the box. The way that the ability works is we can we can provision twenty twelve images. Um, Windows 7 to a certain extent, if you've got a VHD file, but 2016, um, we can support existing VHDs, we can you know, deploy from ISOs, and we can also deploy from WIM. So using the ability is very easy um, to create a, a hyper uh, a VHDX file with all the bits in it that you need, that you can then go and deploy, you know, without necessarily having to drop out to the command line. Within Ability with this metadata that we can sprinkle in on top of it, we can also inject packages into our uh, nano server images. We can apply hot fixes. We can bootstrap the nano server image so we can inject some stuff into that boot process, you know, which, which you'll see happen. So when we copy in our DSC configuration, there's a bootstrap that runs that kickstarts that deployment off. So we, when we deploy one, two, three, ten nano server instances, the ability will, will bootstrap all of that for us. So that's probably enough slides for the time being. I haven't got many more, so don't worry about that. So let's have a look. So the ability includes a load of media by default. There. Can you all see that? Make it a bit bigger. See that? So in here, here are the media definitions that are in, within the ability, and these are the ones that are just shipped as default. You can add your own images, of course. Um, so we ship, these are all eval versions. So the ability, if you provide a configuration to it, by default, it's going to go and download. Evaluation media is going to create parent VHDs. It's then going to create differencing disks for every VM based off of the required uh, image. Um, Recently, or when Server 2016 came out, um, we added, so there's Server 2016 standard eval, so core data center, core eval, there you go, standard nano. So this is 
This is the media definition for the, that comes out of the box, which I'll show you, creating a nano server image in a minute. Um, we give it an idea and a file name, we tell it where to download, and the, the media type's ISO, and then we give it the um, image name. So what the ability is going to do in this instance is it will download the server 2016 evaluation ISO, it's going to mount that, and then it's going to extract the image called Windows Server 2016 Server Standard Nano. Yeah, so it's going to extract that from the WIM file. It's going to create a master VHDX file. Um, and then in here, we can we tell it where within the ISO the packages are, and then the packages that we want to inject into that, into that Nano Server image. This is just the default. Obviously, the ability is based on Hyper-V and deploying labs using DSC, so the reason we add these two packages in as default because obviously it's going to be running as a virtual machine and we're going to be deploying DSC configurations. You can override this with your own media configurations. So if you want a different nano server deployment, um, and there's an example. So in the example, so there's custom media, nano server. So if you wanted a nano compute example, So here's, here's our DSC configuration document for a simple nano server deployment. Here we've got our all nodes. We're going to just deploy one compute node and we've got an IP address. Notice that we've got some, we've got some metadata that we attach to our configuration data. How that gets there is up to you. Yeah. Um, there are some defaults that the ability provides. So if you don't provide a process account when you, in the module itself, there are options around what, what is the default value for OS um, switch and process accounts and all that sort of stuff. Um, so this configuration document will create one one machine, and we're telling it that we want to use this Server 2016 Data Center Nano Compute EN Eval Media ID, and within our configuration document, we can specify our own configuration. So I could give this configuration to any developer, any other colleague. Um, and all the information is contained within this document enough and the ability knows where to go and download it, what the checksum is and how to create an image with all the settings that you're defining within here. And of course, we're adding the compute package to this one as well. You could also go the other route and um, you could in your DSC configuration, you could use the nano server package provider and bootstrap the, the packages in afterwards. So there's my configuration data. And the actual deployment for a, for a nano server VM here. And there's the IP address that we're giving it. We're going to give it, if the DNS got a DNS client address, we're going to use set the DNS address. So this is just a simple way of easily bootstrapping a VM. Um, so it's going to give it an IP address, default gateway DNS, and open the firewall so you can then connect in. Really easy, simple deployment. So that's, I've got a video recording uh, here of... Uh, creating a nano server image. I'll just talk you through it quickly. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to spin up PowerShell. I, do I increase the font size? Awesome. So here, these are all the default stock images that are coming within the ability. Yeah, and here I'm doing, show me the ones where nano, these are the two default stock nano server images. And then I'm doing here, I'm doing new lab image, and I'm giving it the ID. I'm giving it a force. And the only reason I'm giving it a force is because I already had an image created. Yeah. Where did that go? Oh, my laptop's just died. <laughs> like went into sleep mode. Hmm? So we're back, I think. So here, I'm giving it a four, so I'm manually kicking this creation off. What the ability would do is when you say start a lab configuration, if it doesn't have the image created, it's going to go and create it for you. If it doesn't have the media, it's going to go and download it for you. So from a uh, deployment perspective, it's pretty cool. And um, if any of you take Pluralsight courses, then Jason Helmet's got a PS Auto Lab module out, which some of the the trainers on plural site can put their lab configurations together so that when you're taking a training course, you can download a configuration file. And he's wrapped 
some stuff around the ability to make that a bit simpler for people to use. So if you take a Pluralsight course, you may get a configuration you can download. It will spin up all the VMs that are needed in the environment. It's pretty cool. So here we're creating a nano server image. Yeah, so it's going to create a parent VHD. Doesn't take long. So it's creating some disk partitions here. Apologies, you can't really see this. And then it's mounting the VHD, uh, mounting the ISO, locating the WIM image, and it's going to apply that. In here, it's then going to go in, and after it's done applying the image, so it's applying, it's pretty quick to deploy, right? So if I jump forward. So it's applied the image. Now it's injecting our guest package, cab file, and it's going to be able to do the, uh, the localization one as well. It's going to mount all of this. So it's doing a DSC package deployment, and that's it. So we now have a master uh, nano server VM, and now I'm going to create a nano server VM from that image. This is just rather than creating a whole configuration document, what ability allows you to do is specify any media ID. So I'm going to just create a VM quickly called nano standard using our new image that we've just created, attach it to this switch, and then start it. There was a typo. Forgot the name on the new VM. So it's going to create a new VM. I need to supply the, the credentials, default administrative password for the VM. And now it's going to go and create that VM. But what Lability does behind the scenes is every action that we do, and every interaction we have with Hyper V, is we actually use the DSC resources, the Hyper V DSC resources. You know, so every time we create a VM, then we do that. Every time we want to create a virtual switch, we use the DSC resources. That was a conscious decision on my part. Anytime we need to add functionality to Lability, it's got to be fed back into the upstream Hyper-V DSC resources. So recently, um, support for additional hard disks is coming. Yeah. We've got to feed that back into the upstream DSC um, repository so that anybody can use it with Hyper-V. Yeah. So I've just spun up a, um, a nano server VM. It doesn't have an IP address because I didn't deploy configuration inside that. Um, but that's how to easily spin up. I'm going to remove it. And so the ability is going to stop that virtual machine and, and then remove it, remove the, the, the difference in disks. Yeah. So that's how we can create a nano server image with the ability, fairly straightforward. The reason I show you that is it will do it automatically for you. You don't actually need to know that if you deploy configuration. So let's have a look at deploying our infrastructure. So there's an example. Let's look at our configuration for actually deploying our infrastructure. So I've got a DSC configuration here. Um, it's called hyperconverged baseline. So we're going to just create the infrastructure in this configuration. We could put it all in one. Just makes it a bit easier to demo if we do it in two stages. So here I'm importing a whole load of resources. We're going to, we need to spin up an Active Directory domain controller. So I've got an LCM configuration, and then I'm going to, where I'm uh, where my node is tagged as having the controller role. I'm going to make sure I've got all my resources installed. Uh, give it an IP address. To get a default gateway. Um, we're going to create a folder to stick our domain, offline domain join blobs in for our nano server. So to join a nano server to the domain, we need to use off, offline domain join. So we're then going to promote this machine to the domain controller. We're going to create a verse DNS lookup zone. And then for each node in our configuration document, we're going to create uh, a computer account for it. Yep. Store and you know, create an offline domain join blob. Yeah. And then we're going to enable credit, credit SSP. That's because I'm coming from a host that's in a work group. I don't yet have a domain. You know, I can't use Kerberos or anything. So we need to enable credit SSP. If I wanted to deploy server GUI, do it all from the server GUI, I'd be all right. But if I want to do it from my host machine and push it out this configuration and then push out the cluster deployment, I'm going to hit the, the double hop issue. And then for my, uh, for my cluster nodes, I'm going to give them an IP address, DNS, uh, gateway. Um, and I'm going to tell it to wait. 
So I'm using cross node dependencies here. So it's going to wait until the Active Directory domain controller is DC promo to create all my offline domain jo uh, blobs. Yeah. And then what I can do is I can join the nano service to the domain. Yeah, and I'm going to create a VM switch here again. My VMs are only going to have one NIC in them, but I could add in multiple configurations, yeah, depending on my Hyper-V configuration. So it's going to read the configuration data that I've got. So there's my DC node controller, and I've got an IP address, and DNS server. I'm telling it I want it to use standard, 2016 standard. That could be core. Yeah. Um, and then for each of my nano server machines, I, de I define a configuration data for them. Yeah. So I've got my three nano server yeah. clusters. This is new. So these, so these processor options and hard disk drives and stuff, this is additional new ability metadata that's been required to support nano server, hyperconverged nano server cluster. So, so use storage spaces direct, we need at least four disks. Uh, and each node needs to have at least two disks. So we needed a way of not only creating the OS disk, but then a way of creating additional disks. So the, the ability will read this metadata, and for each of the nano server VMs, it's going to create two additional VHD files, uh, VHDX files of 50 inch. And we can specify things like boot orders. So when we start the lab, it's going to wait for the domain control. Well, it'll wait a period of time for the domain control to come up, and then it will start the um, the, the cluster means as well. If you're used to DSC, this is fairly fairly straightforward still. For our hyperconverged cluster, we need a different image yeah? because not only do we need the guest and the DSC, but now we need the failover cluster resources. Yeah, we need the storage and the compute. So we need to make sure we have an image that's got all of these packages installed as well. Not only that, what I did find is if you're looking at doing any of this, make sure you use the latest cumulative update. I was just using the stock, um, the stock media, the stock ISOs that you can download. And it would work sometimes, fail other times. Sometimes storage spaces wouldn't converge and all that sort of stuff. Since using installing the latest cumulative update, it's a lot quicker. So let's have a let's have a look at deploying our uh, infrastructure. So in this demo, um, we're starting Visual Studio Code. I'm going to run through that DSC configuration effectively that you've just seen. I'm going to use the ability to create my Active Directory domain controller. I'm going to power that on. Um, I'm going to wait for Active Directory to com to complete, um, so we don't have to we don't have to wait here. So here. I'm compiling my MOF files, I'm downloading my zip files, so let me pause this. So the ability has the ability um, to go and fetch DSC resources and modules and inject them into the virtual machines. Yeah. So it's fine that we have a, uh, a DSC configuration and we can generate a MOF file, but when we deploy that MOF file, we either need a pool server to bootstrap all the modules resources into our virtual machines or we need to copy the modules in there and of course you can have different versions of modules and all that sort of stuff so what you got here is the ability has a built-in module cache and in my metadata I can tell it which DSC resources I want copied into all my VMs so again this is just additional metadata that's in the configuration document um, and you can do the same with modules. So here we're telling it these are all of the, the modules and the required versions. Notice that some of them don't have any additional stuff. It's going to go, if you don't, if Lability does not have a copy of them, it's going to go to the gallery and download them. Here, I have a Hyper-V, so I have a, my fork of the Hyper-V DSC resources. It's got some of this additional new stuff in it. So there's a couple of pull requests that are waiting to be merged. They haven't, so we can't pull the gallery ones yet. Um, and then there's the, the hardest one. So. Currently, I'm pulling from my fork and this branch, which has got all of the uh, hard disk stuff in it. Um, and then there's a new nano, so, uh, nano cluster resource, which I'll come on to. Again, it's one of these things I didn't realize I was going to end up writing to support this scenario. But that's hosted on GitHub. It's not published to the gallery, so the ability can download 
modules directly from the gallery. Um, sorry, directly from GitHub. So if you've got a different branch or whatever, I do a lot of this when um, working on the DSC resources. Um, obviously, there's a dev branch. If you want to test anything in the dev branch before they push the gallery, you've got to go and download that. So we can bootstrap that with the ability. Tell it to just go, rather than use the gallery version, go and use the GitHub version. So that's what's going on here. Lability is checking that it's download, got all the modules downloaded. It's then injecting these or expanding them into my module paths because I need to compile my MOF files. And of course, the MOFs need to be compiled with exactly the same versions that are going to be deployed inside the virtual machine. So that's what's going on here. So we're just lining all our ducks up. Yeah. Injecting the... Uh, so I've now got DSC resources on my module path. I'm now compiling my MOFs. Yeah, so there's all my MOFs. I've got four MOF files and four MetaMOFs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say reset the DC. So this is rather than deploying my whole lab at this moment in time, I just want to reset the domain controller. So what this will do is it will see that there's no domain controller. It's going to create a differencing disk from the parent. If the parent doesn't exist, it will create it. If it doesn't have the media, it will go and download it. It's going to spin it up. You can see it's doing a whole load of set and tests. So we're using the DSC resources under the hood at this point. And it's going to go and create a virtual machine and power it on. Yeah. And then there, as part of this, there's a commandlet within the ability module. It's called wait for lab. What it's going to do is it's going to connect and it's going to poll the machines. It's going to wait for the LCMs to finish. Yeah. So this was shown more yesterday in the CI deployment. So this was part of the continuous integration conundrum we have with testing the Active Directory and Hyper-V DSC resources. How do we test that they actually deploy Active Directory domains, we can't really do unit testing around that. So this has been extended to allow some kind of local integration testing for that sort of stuff. So what we're doing is we're waiting, we're waiting for the DC to start up and then we're going to, once we can remote into it, and that's part of the bootstrapping process, we always enable uh, pierce remoting uh, on all the VMs we spin up. Once we can connect, which is why you're seeing red text here, right? It can't connect to that machine. So it's going to keep trying. Notice that obviously it says, now we've now got uh, a DC, it's running, it's doing some stuff. It's going to continually poll. Does it every, every minute, and obviously you can configure. But, you know, Active Directory is deploying on this machine. And on server 2016, it seems to take an extremely long time compared to 2012 anyway. So now the machines come back up yeah. It's starting to reconnect now, and it's saying that the LCM is busy. Yeah. So it still knows that a DSC configuration is applying. And even after we get the old screen come up, there's a reason I recorded this, because you're not going to want to sit and watch this. So even after this has come up, the LCM still says it's busy. Yeah. So we're just waiting for Active Directory to finish deploying, really. And of course, DSC is going to reboot the node. Still says it's busy. Obviously, it's got to kick off its consistency check. Right. And then at the end of it, I run a stop lab. You know, so it's running a stop lab, so it reads the DSC configuration data and knows how to stop the VMs, what VMs are in the lab, and stop them. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do start lab. This is going to spin my machine up, and then I'm going to deploy my um, my my nano server machines themselves, which I think is the next video. Right. So I could have done this all in one, and I could have spun up. The domain controller could have spun up all of my, my uh, nano server nodes, waited for the domain to come up and join it, but then they're trying to show you what's going on under the hood and the order it's doing it's, it's a little bit different. So hence why it's been split up. So in this video, I'm going to switch to PowerShell. Hopefully it's going to be a bit bigger for you this time. So I'm going to copy. I was starting to have some console-y output type issues with the VS Code. So here, I'm going to start the lab. I'm going to reset all my nano machines. So nano 1, nano 2, nano 3. So it's starting the lab, starting up the domain controller. It waits 30 seconds for that to start. That's, part, that's in my, my metadata configuration. So 
There we go. And now it's creating my three. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. So it's creating the machine. It's formatting the disks. It's now going to create my um, my hyperconverged image. Yeah. So now we've got a different image because we've got those additional packages. So this is what I'm saying. The ability will do all this for you. So it's going to go and create. It's seen that you know my first VM requires this image. It's going to go and create that image now. And it takes an age yeah, to install the cumulative update. It's like over a gig in size. Yeah. So now it's, it's installing the cumulative update. And this is the bit, you know, you look at this here and you think, well, I've got another 20 minutes. It's not. It's, it's waiting for that cumulative update to install it. Again, another reason why you recorded this. So it's still installing. So out of the 20 odd minutes, most of it, yeah? So now, now it's got the master parent VHD file. It's gonna go through and it's gonna create all of my, um, my three nano server nodes uh, with additional disks. It's gonna inject the metamorphs and the moth files. It's gonna power them up and then DSC is gonna kick in and configure those VMs. Yeah. Here it's copying in all the modules that are required. Now it's onto nano server two, you know, it's then Testing whether the VHDX is there using the DSC resources if it doesn't invoke the set method. All that sort of stuff. So it copies them in and then it will do the same for node three and then it's going to power them on. Yeah, so there's number three. And I've told it to do, I've started it and told it to do a weight lab again. So now I've just powered on all three nano server um, hosts. I'm doing a weight lab. And of course, you've got to wait for nano server to start up. You've got to wait for it to connect. Wait for the DSC configuration to apply. Once the LCM says it's idle, we then say we're done, right? And as you can see, we are now done, or nearly. Uh, idle, busy, unknown, unknown. Idle, yeah. Status idle, expecting idle. Lab, labs. So all of my machines, all of the all the DSC nodes are now converged. They're all idle. We now have an Active Directory with three nano servers that are joined to an Active Directory domain. So we're we're kind of like halfway there now. We've done our infrastructure. Yeah. So you give it the configuration data, and it can read that. So if you run checkpoint lab, you know, as you can see, it will it will shut all the machines down and checkpoint. We can give it a force, and it will do it while they're on. So, yeah. so you can do stop lab, start lab, remove lab, deploy, you know, effectively start lab. Configuration will deploy it and checkpoint it. You got restore lab as well, so you can revert all machines back to the checkpoint. No, you can do it all on from the command line. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can manually go and apply a checkpoint in the in the console if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got restore lab. Yeah, so if you do restore lab and then you say when you do checkpoint lab, you give it a name. And if you say restore lab, it will revert all the machines back to that checkpoint console. Yeah, so we we do a lot of that. And yeah, so I mean, this for us internally, we I must deploy lab environments well at least once a day. You know, just from fresh. Yeah. Um, once you get into that mindset and that habit, it's fairly, it's fairly cool. Right? You're not worried about losing anything because you know you can rebuild it in like 20 minutes or whatever. We do have some fairly big, beefy configuration deploying exchange. Yeah, you're not going to do that in under an hour. Um, so there's my nano server infrastructure deployed. Yeah. So let's just go back quickly to. I think it's one more slide, and then we've got. Back into the so now we need to talk about cluster deployment. Yeah. So for cluster, we need we need Active Directory. Well, we've got a domain controller now. We need at least two cluster nodes. Well, we've got three. Um, I did have four, and that didn't work out too well. But I think that was due to the number of disks that I didn't have. Um, and to to enable or create a hyper converged cluster, we need to enable nested virtualization. Yeah. 
And we also need additional VHDs for Storage Spaces Direct. Now, the reason I've highlighted these in yellow is this is new functionality. So the nested virtualization, there's pull requests out on GitHub for this functionality. It's going to go obviously back into the upstream Hyper-V DSC resources. Um, we're waiting for that to be merged. The VHDX one is, there's an old pull request. It's been neglected. So I, I picked up that. I've rewritten some of it. Um, it just needs submitting as a PR. So the, these kind of experimental features at this moment in time. Yeah. So we need to wait for the DSC to complete our infrastructure, wait for Active Directory deployed. We've done that. We're at this point now. Now we need to create a failover cluster. Yeah, and then we need to enable storage spaces direct. Let me just skip the demo slide. So this is the bit that tripped me up, and I just wasn't paying attention. With Nano Server, you cannot run Nano Server failover clustering commandments yeah. on Nano Server. Yeah. Well, this is a bit of a problem from our DSC deployment perspective, because when you look at the X failover clustering DSC resources that are published, they expect to be run locally. Yeah. So you can't run these on a node and say, I want to create a cluster, but I want to use these cluster nodes. I don't want to not use me as a cluster. Yeah. So we've got an issue there. Yeah. Uh, and clusters must be managed remotely you know, from PowerShell. So that's fine. But uh, the built-in DSC resource, or not the built-in DSC resources, but the DSC resources that are published on the gallery, um, they do not support this. So this is the bit that I wasn't expecting to have to do. You know, I was under the assumption that they'll probably just work. You know, don't, don't assume anything. So how are we going to deploy our cluster? So this is where this new nano cluster resource comes in. It's up on GitHub today. It's quick and dirty. It's a composite resource, which basically is just using script resources. So what I've done is I've wrapped the, the cluster command that's around, and now we can execute them against remote nodes. You know, so we can, from our domain controller, we can now deploy a nano server cluster using DSC. But this is quick and dirty. It should be turned are really into a DSC resource or the existing resource should be amended to add this functionality in. Um, but it includes the ability to create a new cluster, to create to enable storage spaces direct, and then create a storage spaces direct volume. Yeah. And if you look at the, the actual code itself, it's it's not very uh, it's not difficult. Quick look. So just so you can see what's going on. So I have four. I have four DSC resources, the cluster resource. It's just a whole load of uh, script script resources. You know, that will uh, test to see whether the cluster is up in this instance available and then it tests whether the uh, the cluster nodes that are specified you know they're either you either got extra ones in that need removing or we need to add an additional cluster node and of course the set method can run up here runs get cluster if it doesn't exist then it creates a new cluster and then adds the nodes in. The whole um, the existing resource doesn't support you know, adding cluster nodes and all that sort of stuff as well. So it is quick and dirty, right? So that's all you need to understand. So let's have a look at our configuration. So to create our hyper-converged nano cluster, remember we've already got part of the configuration. These could be merged together. Um, so we're going to give it, we've got a domain name, we're going to give it the cluster name, we're going to give the cluster address. Obviously, we need credentials to reach out and add and communicate with the cluster nodes and enable them. Yeah. Um, I need Hyper-V module because I need to enable that nested virtualization. And then I need the nano server cluster resource yeah, so that I can provision my, my cluster resources. So for all cluster nodes, I'm going to set 
the cluster storage or the, my default location, storage location to see cluster storage. That doesn't exist yet. Bear in mind. Um, so I'm going to set that and then for, on my domain controller, I'm going to create a new cluster and I'm going to pass it in all of my cluster nodes. So, so cluster nodes here, it looks at the configuration data where they've got cluster name and then gathers their name. And then, um, and then make sure that they're fully qualified. Yeah. So when we create our cluster, we then pass that information in. We wait for the cluster to come, uh, to come up. And then after the cluster's come up, we're going to create, we're going to enable storage spaces direct. And again, it needs to run against the cluster. Um, there is no equivalent of this resource currently. And then we need to create a, um, storage spaces direct volume as well. So we're going to create a, once our storage spaces direct cluster is enabled, we're then going to create a volume. Yeah. Um, with some settings in there, and then the fact I haven't specified a size is just going to use all sizes. Fairly, fairly straightforward. So if we have a look, yeah. So I think I fire up PowerShell again, so it should be a bit better. So I'm going to I'm going to start the lab up. Bearing in mind I shut it down and checkpointed it. I'm going to start the lab up. You can see it's going to start the domain controller. It's going to wait 30 seconds and then it's going to start on my, um, my nano server host. It's then going to go and compile this configuration. So it's going to compile the configuration that's got the um, enable the cluster features in it. So it's going to come up. Obviously it can take too long. Yeah, that's done. So now here, I'm importing my hyper-converged uh, configuration. I'm going to compile my MOFs. So we're going to get some MOFs that are generated. Obviously, you need to specify the credentials. I could have scored them. So I've compiled my MOF files. I'm now going to create a session to my domain controller. I'm going to copy in the MOF files and I'm going to kick it off. This is why I need to create SSP. Yeah, so from, from my, my laptop here, I'm connecting into my domain controller. And then if I'm going to try and deploy a cluster, I'm going to hit that double hop issue, yeah. which is why we've got cluster, um, create SSP in there. So, and then I'm just going to invoke start DSC configuration now. Mm -hmm. So this is running on the on the controller VM. You can see that it's going to start going to start creating the cluster. All my nodes are running. You can see that the CPU usage goes up, um, and we're going to wait. And it does take a little while. Hence why I uh, recorded a video, because it can take a little while for Storage Spaces Direct to come online. So here, it's created the cluster. The wait for cluster is finished. Now it's creating the storage spaces direct cluster on my nodes. It could take a little while, right? Now it's creating a volume and now it's complete. So I've now just deployed a hyper-converged cluster, nested Hyper-V cluster. And then I can connect in to the main controller. What I'll do is I'll stop that there. So. So in here, this is where we, what we were seeing within Visual Studio Code. Here's my configuration data. So if I want to start this lab configuration up, I'm going to just do start lab, give it a configuration data path to the PSD1 file. I'll get it a bit of a base. Yeah. And it can now infer all of that. It's going to start, if I go up to Hyper-V, it's going to start in my domain controller on this machine. I'm just going to the video is recorded on this machine, so I'm just going to fire the lab up. Let me just show you. See, so there's my domain controller. It started up after 30 seconds. In here, it'll then start all the other nodes that are in that configuration. 
and then we can we can go in and we can have a look at a virtual machine. Just to show you, it's all there, the storage clusters there, and etc. Et so now it's starting my nodes. Nano one, two, three. Obviously, they don't take too long to start. So if I was to connect into my domain controller, I think it's that one. So I give this one a different password. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. So I'm logged on to my domain controller. It's got the full GUI. The reason I installed the full GUI is because obviously we've got the cluster, uh, the failover clustering command that's in here. Apparently so. Failover cluster manager. Yeah. So this is the VM that video is recorded off of. So the, there already be a, the cluster should be added already. Let me try and get a bit as well. No items for connect to cluster. So let's just have a quick look. So, notes. Yeah. So, here's our, so from within our um, domain controller, which is obviously a virtual machine, we can see that we've got our three nano servers are all up, the cluster's up, it's all working. When we look at storage, when we look at this pool, here's our storage spaces direct. So it's it's run up. So you can see that I've got I'm using 293 gig. Fortunately, I'm using dynamic VHDXs in the underlying system. Obviously, I don't I don't know that my SSD is not that big. I don't think so. It wouldn't cope. So there's the the six 50 gig drives aggregated together in our storage spaces direct. Yeah. And then once we have our we can then create our volume, and there's our um, there's our clustered storage spaces direct virtual disk, you know, which is using you know, got out of my 300 gig, I've now got 200 gig available you know, due to the redundancy that I've selected. You know. But in theory, apparently. You know, I have a nested virtual machine running on Nano Server 2. Yeah, was oven running. Yeah. There's no OS in it. I could copy in the V8 and ISO file and then deploy it or do whatever. But in theory, we should be able to connect to the console. This always seems to be a bit ropey. I think if I go this way. Connect to Nano Server 2. Yeah, it never seems to. Uh, if you look, if you look down here, I don't know if you can see that. But in here, you, you can see it's like the boot BIOS saying that basically there's no OS found. Yeah, I don't know why from here I can't, I can't see that. But that is my hyper converged cluster deployed by DSC. Yeah. Obviously, you're not going to be running too much on side of them, but it was more of a proof of concept from my perspective, evaluating nano server, could we deploy it? I think we would like to deploy a hyperconverged nano server physical devices um, back in the office maybe, um, but I don't see any of our customers currently using this. I think they're still too attached to their goods. Give them a hug. So, just a quick wrap up then, because I'm, I'm out of time. Um, so we've got two story spaces direct, requires a minimum of four disks. Um, 
I think it's actually, depending on the configuration you're deploying, maybe each, each server requires two disks. So you can get away with two nodes uh, with two disks each. Um, waiting for the storage space's direct cluster to converge. Sometimes I would run it and it would take like five minutes. Sometimes I run it and it takes three hours. Yeah, I don't know why, just sometimes seems to take an inordinately long amount of time. Since deploying the cumulative update, it's a lot, it's been a lot quicker and a lot more consistent as well. Yeah. So just if you're looking at doing this, um, make sure you install the latest cumulative update. Um, I had some issues around cluster creation and DNS issues. Um, so when applying the DNS, uh, when applying the the cluster configuration, the DSC resource would say it was complete. We'd then go and try and create a storage spaces or enable storage spaces direct. It would say it couldn't find a cluster. Yeah. Which is why there was the wait for nano server resource. I had to add that one because it just seemed to be a timing issue, DNS caching or whatever. It took a little while for the for the host to actually go and be able to come find the cluster. So that's that's been added. And depending on your configuration, you may need to enable MAC address spoofing, depending on your whether you're using NAT or whether you're using um, surfacing external uh, networks. So it's just some things you need to be aware of. And in summary, yes, you could use the ability to create nano server images quite quickly. You can use them, you can use it just to create a VHDX file if you want to, and you could use it and deploy it however you want to. You can create your own custom um, images with your own packages and stuff installed internally as well. You can do some custom bootstrapping, whatever you need to do. Um, there are, so these are two new resources that are required for this to work. There are pull requests out on GitHub. Hopefully they'll be merged soon. It just seems to take a, a long time at the minute to get any pull requests merged. Um, and I'm working on this one. And this is the ability to add additional virtual disks to a virtual machine um, using a DSC configuration. So that one's coming as well. I think that's about it. So. Have a break now. Any questions? It's pretty cool. It was, a, it was nice to play with some new technology for a change. Yeah. Um, it is the future, so we're told, and it's pretty cool. So, you know, get, get your hands dirty. Other than that, thank you for, uh, thanks for listening. Oh, I've got some announcements here. Anyone who did not pick up his or her free ebook or printed book, flip your badge. We've got a green dot, printed English V2 book, a yellow dot, German 